Live from the campus of Penn State University, this is PSN News. It's Wednesday, March 27th. We have updates on a lawsuit against the Center County Correctional Facility, as well as more on DUI charges facing a Penn State administrator. We also have updates on the fatal bridge collapse in Baltimore, along with entertainment, sports, and weather. Stay tuned. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Emma Aiken. And I'm Jace Obardo. A rally in State College that was meant to show support of the Affordable Care Act took a turn on Friday. Protesters showed up voicing their disapproval of President Biden's handling of the ongoing Israel-Hamas war. State College Mayor Ezra Nains was among one of the speakers at the event when protesters began calling for a ceasefire. One of them even saying, quote, We can't sit here talking about health care when 40,000 people have been murdered. Nains decided to cut the rally short because of high tensions. Two men were arrested on Friday after being accused of selling methamphetamine in Belfont. The two men are 30-year-old Taylan Hamilton of Williamsport and 26-year-old Zachary Leiter of Belfont. They face felony charges of possession with intent to deliver and criminal use of a communication facility. Investigators with the Center County Drug Task Force learned of the men through an informant who made several controlled buys from the men. The preliminary hearings are scheduled for today. The Center County Correctional Facility is facing a federal lawsuit from a former inmate. Jessica Tressler alleges the facility failed to provide her with proper medical treatment during her 17-day stay there in April of 2022. She says it ultimately led to her needing emergency heart surgery and a four-month hospital stay. The five-count suit is seeking damages of $25 million. A Penn State administrator was charged with drunk driving last Monday. Diane Andrews is the university's special assistant to the vice president for student affairs. She was charged with two misdemeanor counts of DUI for driving with a blood alcohol content of 0.21%. Andrews crashed into the back of a driver who was stopped at a red light in downtown State College back in January. Her preliminary hearing is set for April 17th. This is the second official in the department to be charged in the past three weeks. Temperatures hit 60 today, but will we continue seeing this warmer weather? Filippo Formica with Campus Weather Service has more details. Take a look. From the students of the Department of Meteorology and Atmospheric Science, here is your Penn State Campus Weather Service forecast. Good evening, PSN. I'm student meteorologist Filippo Formica here with your Wednesday evening forecast. Taking a look back on Beaver Stadium today, things started out a bit clearer, but as the clouds moved in, we are stuck in the high 40s, low 50s. As we got into the afternoon hours today, we saw those temperatures skyrocket as the skies cleared and blue skies currently over Beaver Stadium with our temperatures at 57 degrees. And then we can see that clearing on our radar and satellite imagery where the western two-thirds of the Commonwealth a lot less cloudier, the central portion of the state mostly clear. Some higher clouds off to the west, especially up near Erie. And we see some rain and showers moving through the eastern third of the Commonwealth, keeping things a bit cooler there and a little bit drearier, especially in Philadelphia where we've been seeing those showers on and off throughout the day. We did just see some heavier precipitation moving through Allentown. That is now off into New York State. And this line of storms is continuing to push to the east. But we are going to be seeing these conditions continuing for the eastern third of the Commonwealth. As we zoom things out to the rest of the country here, you can see a disturbance here in the Pacific Northwest that will be heading our way towards this weekend. But we do have a big area of high pressure for the most part controlling the central portion of the U.S. So that will be making the end of this work week a bit nicer in the area as that starts to work into the Commonwealth. Taking a look back on today and our current conditions, you can see a big divide between the west and eastern thirds of the Commonwealth here. Except for Erie, which was covered with some higher cloud cover throughout most of the day, the central portion and portions of the west were able to see some clearing of those clouds, allowing for things to climb into the high 50s and low 60s, 
Compare that to the eastern third of the Commonwealth where things stayed in the high 40s with some cloud cover and some rain. And we'll be seeing that rain continuing throughout the eastern third of the Commonwealth here throughout the next couple days. This is Thursday at 1 p.m. with those heavier showers in the southeastern portion of the state. This will be continuing to move through as a coastal low pressure moves through the region before things start to clear out late Thursday night and we see some much needed clearing for the beginning of our weekend here on Friday before maybe some cloud cover and some showers start to move through for Saturday. So let's take a look here at the projected rain totals here. I want to point your attention to Philadelphia here. 1.02 inches of rainfall on top of what has already fallen here between now and Friday at 2.30 in the morning. A half an inch expected in Allentown, a tenth of an inch and, a, and five hundredths of an inch in Harrisburg and Scranton respectively. This is going to be mostly confined to the I-95 corridor, those heavier rain totals, but still significant where Philadelphia has already seen three inches of rain so far this March. So let's take a look here. After this moves out, we do have some rain showers moving in for Saturday, and we could be seeing those impacting portions of the southwestern part of the state. Things will be mostly rained here for the Commonwealth this weekend, but if you're traveling to the north, we could be seeing some of those flakes fly as well, especially in portions of New York and northern New England. So taking a look here at tonight, 38 degrees, mostly cloudy with those winds south at 5 to 10 miles an hour. Before we get to our Thursday here, at least in State College, mix of clouds and sun with the northwest winds at 5 to 10 miles an hour. 51 degrees, so a bit chillier than today, but still right around average for this time of the year. And as we get to our seven-day outlook here, looking towards our weekend, things are going to be clear but breezy on Friday, maybe some rain showers on Saturday, partly cloudy skies on Sunday, looking like the better day of the weekend with those temperatures climbing towards 60 degrees, and then it looks like a dreary start to the next work week, a lot of rain moving through the Commonwealth. So as we get towards the weekend here, there are a couple days to enjoy and get outside before things start to take a turn towards the worse here. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday and the rest of the work week. Have a great day. Welcome back to PSN News. I'm Jamie DiBologna with your sports update. Penn State's men lacrosse, Matt Costin, was named to the United States Intercollegiate Lacrosse Association D1 Team of the Week. This is Costin's first U.S. ILA Team of the Week honor in his career. Costin scored a hat trick in Penn State's 12-9 victory over Ohio State. Costin also scored a crucial game-tying goal in the closing seconds of the third quarter. This is Costin's third hat trick of the season. The Penn State basketball, baseball team broke the game open with seven runs in the sixth on its way to a 10-1 win over Pitt on Tuesday night. Penn State improved to 13-9 on the season, while Pitt dropped to 11-11. The Nittany Lions tallied 10 runs on 10 hits and 10 walks. Penn State will visit Illinois to continue Big Ten play. MLB opening week is finally here, and after a wild offseason, all 30 teams will play in 15 games on Thursday. 30 of the best pitchers across the majors will take the mound, including 20 All-Stars, four pitchers who will be debuting for new clubs, and one who will make his first career start. The Brewers and Mets will kick off things in the early afternoon. Later in the day, the reigning champion Rangers open their season by hosting Cody Bellinger and the Cubs. That's all for your sports update. After the break, Juliana Tordo has the latest in the world of entertainment. Stay tuned. Welcome back to PSN News. I'm Juliana Tordo with your entertainment update. Global superstar rapper Drake will finally be taking over the Bryce Jordan Center this Sunday after rescheduling from earlier this month. He will be joined by Lil Durk for his, for his It's All a Blur tour. But now the duo of Drake and Durk will become a trio. Lil Wayne announced that he will be joining the show as well. Lil Wayne is a five-time Grammy winner with over 180 Hot 100 hits. Tickets are on sale via Ticketmaster. In other Penn State news, our Annalise Hansen is live in the studio now with more details on a research exhibition for graduate students. Annalise? Thanks, Juliana. 
Last week, I had the chance to attend the Penn State Graduate Exhibition, where I learned all about the exciting research of Penn State's graduate students. Let's take a look. The Penn State Graduate Exhibition is a showcase of research and creative work of the graduate students of Penn State. This exhibition presents the design, research poster, and visual arts presentation in order to communicate their research to students, educators, and members of the community. The graduate exhibition took place Friday, March 22nd. With presentations, exhibits, and posters across various fields, including but not limited to science, engineering, humanities, arts, social sciences, and business, it is a platform for students to share their findings, insights, and innovations with peers, faculty, industry professionals, and the general public. All right, the main objectives of this, of this year's graduate exhibition is to give our students from grad programs across the university and across the campuses the opportunity to present their scholarly and research work so that they're able to communicate it with a lay audience who's an educated audience. They can be community members, faculty, staff, other grad students, and also get um, praise and constructive feedback on the work they're doing so that they're more prepared for their scholarly careers and also for other conference presentations and the like. Graduate students spent the day interacting and explaining their work and research to the Penn State community over light refreshments. The exhibition involves a panel of judges who evaluated the presentations, exhibits, or posters based on the predetermined criteria. The Penn State Graduate Exhibition fosters a culture of intellectual inquiry, collaboration, and excellence within the Penn State graduate community. For Penn State Network News, I am Annalise Hansen. This event will continue to be held annually to serve as an outlet for graduate students to showcase their hard work. Back to you, Juliana. Thanks, Annalise. Country singer Casey Musgraves will also be coming to the Bryce Jordan Center later this year. Musgraves is best known for her album, Golden Hour, that was honored with the Grammy for Album of the Year in 2019. Musgraves will be joined by Father John Misty and bluegrass band Nickel Creek. She will be bringing her Deeper Well tour to Happy Valley on September 4th. Tickets are still on sale now by a Ticketmaster. Diddy's Los Angeles and Miami homes got raided by federal officials this past Monday. The hip-hop star is subject a federal investigation after allegations of sex trafficking, sexual assault, illegal narcotics, and firearms. Homeland Security's seized phones from the rapper and his sons were detained outside of the home. They were released without charges. Diddy departed on a trip to the Bahamas and it still remains unclear if the trip was planned ahead of the raid. That's all for your entertainment update. Coming up next, interview anchor Gianna Brown will be speaking to Kaylee Tallman, a Penn State Athletics talent intern. Stay tuned. Welcome back to PSN News. I'm Gianna Brown, and joining me is Kaylee Tallman, a Penn State Athletics talent intern. Thank you so much for coming in tonight, Kaylee. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> so... Originally being from the D.C. area, what made you come to Penn State? Gosh, there is a story involved with this one. I, my family grew up Penn State fans, as many people who come here are. But I was kind of always like, uh, what's so special about this school? I don't really get it. It's a college. Like, what can be so special about this place? And my dad said, okay, you need to see this. And so he decided when I was in eighth grade to take me to the 2017 Penn State Whiteout against Michigan. Um, and Saquon Barkley ran the opening play back for a touchdown. And I said after that, okay, <laughs> there is no place that can possibly top what this emotion feels like. And so every time I looked at a school after that, I was always like, okay, is this Penn State? Is this Penn State? Is this Penn State? And I toured almost 30 schools and no school was Penn State. So that's how, that's how I got here. <laughs> that's actually a great story. Um, so what are you studying here? So I am a broadcast journalism major. I have minors in entrepreneurship and innovation, digital media trends and analytics, and I also am doing the John Curley Center certificate. Well, what made you interested in sports in the first place? I feel like every person says this, but growing up, um, I went to so many sporting events with my dad. He was a huge, he is a huge Washington Capitals hockey fan, and being from the D.C. area, the Caps 
for our team. So starting as a three-year-old, I would go to probably 20 or 30 games a year. And I just was completely fascinated by it. My dad said I've never seen a three-year-old so interested in that. I'd be there asking questions about the penalties and who was what number. And by four, I was memorizing the entire roster. And so from then on, I was like, okay, there's nothing else that can replicate this energy. And so I kind of just wanted to be surrounded by that forever. Absolutely. So what are you involved in at Penn State that you've been able to pursue this sports interest? That's a complicated question because what am I not involved in, honestly? <laughs> um, I'm the director of events for the Association of Women in Sports Media. I'm on-camera talent for Penn State Athletics, covering all 31 sports at Penn State. I'm a sideline reporter for Big Ten Plus um, at Penn State. I'm part of Penn State Sports Night. I'm part of Com Radio. I've just started a new position as communications team for Teammates for Life, which is a women's initiative here. So really everything and anything, honestly. Yeah, it seems like you're in almost every club here. So how do you find, find time for all of this? I, that's been probably the hardest thing to learn since coming to college. Going from high school to college, I really thought the schoolwork transition was going to be the hardest, and it really hasn't been. My days are scheduled from 9 a.m. to sometimes 11 p.m., and I have to remind myself a lot of the time that I am a college student. I am supposed to be having fun here, um, which I am having a lot of fun. But sometimes it's been a lot about learning kind of work-life balance. And I've started to learn that, okay, it's okay to say no to things. For example, I'm going home this Easter despite there being games going on this weekend that I could be covering. So, yeah, I as I've gotten more into my Penn State career, you would say I have learned to kind of not spread myself too thin. Absolutely. It's been about two years now, so, so far, what's been your favorite memory? Oh my gosh, that is, <laughs> there are so many different memories. I remember, obviously, my first football game as a fan was truly something special, and I think every Penn State student would say that. Being in that student section as a Penn State student is not something you're ever gonna get the opportunity to do in your life again. Um, but in terms of covering sports, the first time I truly was kind of sitting there on the sidelines thinking like, wow, how is this real, is my first Big Ten Plus call. It was for women's soccer. They were playing TCU. And I was standing there with the producer in my ear while the anthem was playing, kind of waiting to go live. And I was like, wow, this is it. You know, obviously not for the rest of my life. But I just felt like, okay, I have done what little me wanted to do already. Mm -hmm. And that is something so special. So that would probably be it so far. So taking these moments and all the other roles that you're playing, what do you want to do post-graduate? There are so many things I want to do post-grad. My dream is to cover sports on camera. I think that's pretty obvious at this point, but the capacity for me to do that with social media and everything is expanding all the time so ideally I'd love to college cover college sports I feel like I found my home doing college sports especially at a school like Penn State so Jenny Taft is a sideline reporter for Fox Big Noon covering the Big Ten that's probably mm -hmm. the dream yeah and lastly what's your advice to students who want to follow a path similar to yours work hard I think that is the biggest thing like you really have to put your head down and work and think about what your priorities are going to be it's it's a grind there are so many sides that are so unglamorous about doing this in college I mean there have been people who've seen me like walking up the hill in in downtown state college with a broken tripod carrying my backpack and my hair all messed up with a 25 pound camera bag walking two miles to go cover a softball game and that's truly the reality of it but if you love what you do that is so minuscule in kind of the overall picture of everything so, yeah yeah well Kaylee, thank you so much for coming in tonight and telling us more about your experience with penn state athletics Thanks now, stick around, because coming up next, Jason Emma will have the latest news from across the nation. The Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore collapsed yesterday morning after a large container ship crashed into it. 
The ship caught on fire and pieces of the bridge started breaking and falling into the Patapsco River below. The collapse sent several vehicles and members of a construction crew into the water. Two people have been rescued, but responders are still searching for at least six missing people who are presumed to be dead. A scheduled Drag Queen Story Hour that was supposed to take place Saturday at a Pennsylvania library was canceled after a suspicious package was found in the building. Police evacuated Lancaster Public Library after the package was found. A state police bomb squad cleared the library, but additional reported threats were still being investigated, according to police. Lancaster Pride, an LGBTQ organization, posted a notice on social media saying that the Drag Story Hour had been canceled to ensure the safety and well-being of the community. A Pennsylvania teen is being charged with a 12-year-old's death. Ash Cooper of Ben Salem, formerly known as Joshua Cooper, is 18 now and pleaded guilty on Thursday to third-degree murder and other charges relating to the death of Morgan Connors in November 2022. Cooper is sentenced to 15 to 40 years in prison with a consecutive seven years of probation as part of a plea deal. Authorities said Friday they believe the deaths of a 72-year-old man who lived in a remote cabin and an 83-year-old man who was walking his dogs are connected to an escaped Idaho inmate. The escaped prisoner is Skylar Mead and his accomplice is Nicholas Eufenor, who is a recently, re who is a recently released inmate. They are both members of the Aryan Knights gang and were arrested in Twin Falls, Idaho on Thursday. That concludes our show tonight at PSN News. Be sure to check us out on Twitter and Facebook at PSN News, on Instagram at Penn State Network News, and to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash PSN News. Have a good night and stay safe, Penn State.